guys and welcome back to another episode. Today I'm in uh, Victoria. We're gonna go chase swordfish. The catch is, I'm on my own. No one else in the boat. Uh, catching swordfish, for anyone who knows, is obviously a pretty big feat, even when you've got a deck crew. So to do it on your own is certainly a challenge that uh, I'm a little bit nervous about, but also very excited. So as you can see in the background, you got Cape Conner in there. So I've come down between Mallacoota and Lakes Entrance to head out into some good water, out to the canyons and uh, drop some baits down and uh, hopefully convert to a nice uh, broadbill swordfish. guys welcome to Bass Strait. I've come down on my own this morning run down from Cape Conran about a 30 nautical mile run. Glamour conditions as you can see we're a little bit early it's still it's the end of uh, March so I haven't heard of a lot of swords being caught but it's definitely worth a shot to come down here and have a go. Uh, I'm just about to drop down this rig I'll run through the rig just real quick with you so um, we're running a striped tuna belly flap bait with a 13 J hook. Just got a Lumo skirt over the top of that just to give it a bit more visibility down there at 560 meters. Below that, I've got my breakaway weight, uh, just a house brick. And then along our wind on and our leader, we've got some lights. Um, I'm running four lights, two diamond lights, uh, this bad boy and um, the big one here as well. Uh, 130 pound top shot, so we're not here to muck around with uh, little fish and uh, try and try and break records. We, we want to get a sword to the boat, so that's the plan. All right, let's get this bad boy down. Guys, that bait is on the bottom. I've just uh, wound it up a little bit. Dropped down to 550 metres of water. Uh, brought it up about maybe 20 metres off the bottom. And now we play the waiting game for swordfish. Most people might think it's a boring, boring thing to do, but I just find it so exciting just watching this rod tip. And what we're waiting for is hopefully we can show you today is just the slightest, ever slightest little bump in the rod. And then hopefully that swordfish is gonna come in and grab it. I do normally run two rods, two rods in this scenario, but because I'm here on my own, if I hook up on one of those rods, I've then got to wind that other rod up five, 600 meters of line while I'm trying to fight another fish five or 600 meters down. So that could just end in disaster. So today I'm just gonna to stick to one rod and uh, we'll see how we go. So I've had this bait down for about an hour now. The brick's still attached, so what I'm gonna do is break the brick off and then just drift that bait up through the water column for maybe another 15, 20 minutes, depending on how far we're gonna drift and what sort of angle it pulls it up to. And then um, 
Once we do that, we'll wind it in, reset the drift, and go again. Well, I can't break it off by hand, so I'm going to use the boat. Ticked over 12 o'clock midday. Starting to lose a little bit of faith. <laughs> now I've had two drops in this canyon just drifting the bait with a brick on. This last drift has been really good. We sort of sat in a really good depth range. And not a lot of wind as you can see out there, so the drift's been really fantastic. But uh, unfortunately, just no bites. Fingers crossed we can turn something this afternoon. Otherwise, I might have to go for a, a drop on the edge and chase the bottom fish before we go back in. Oh, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. All right, we'll just let him run with that now. We've just had something, or oh, I've just had, oh, yep, yep, there he is, that's him. I'll just try and get the bite for you guys. Just watch that rod tip. He's picked it up and he picked it up and ran with it for a little bit. See that? See that right there. This is the only bite I've had all day, so I'm very nervous. I'm just gonna let him take it. Really let him get it get it down swallowed and I was just over there playing with the plotter and having a look around and next minute there's this line started running off here a little bit so yeah he's definitely he's running with it now <sighs> fingers crossed fingers crossed this is a sword guys Wind into him now. So he might have dropped it there. Yeah, yeah, there he is, there he is. Just not sure, this is really typical of a sword. Come in, whack it. Don't do a lot with it, whack it, whack it. I broke the brick off about five minutes before this first bite, so there's no weight on there. Sometimes you just got to tease them up. Oh yes. 
Yes, there he is. Look at that. He's just whacking it. We need him to pick it up. Try and get his front row seat to that bite. Oh, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. All right, we'll just let him run with that now. He's definitely got it. Dropped it. He's dropped it. He's <sighs> back again. He's hard on it. He wants it. That's a good sign. Oh, yeah, real typical of a sword there. Oh. We just gotta get him to pick it up and. Swallow it. Dropped it. Oh, damn it. I'm back. Oh, yeah, there he is again. Oh, he wants it. Oh, yeah, grab it. That's it. Take it. I hope he's got it. It's hard to tell sometimes. It's a little bit of current there, but no, nah, I think he's definitely got it now. past three I've waited all day for this moment and this fish is just being an absolute pest. There he is, there he is. He's still there. He's just at the moment just whacking it with his bill and he's circling around it, whacking it. Every time we put put the drag up and wind a bit. It's just teasing him up. Pretty confident that's him getting it there. I've had him play with the bait for about 45 minutes. It's just... It's one of those things, very frustrating but exciting at the same time. And you've just got to wait for him to make that move.
I think we've blown that one, unfortunately. It's a tough pill to swallow after um, having all morning without a touch. I think I, um, when I come tight on him there, I probably come a bit tight prematurely on him and pricked him. He did come back after that, but uh, yeah, he never grabbed it and ran with it, unfortunately. Uh, well, there's still a few hours of daylight left, so fingers crossed we can get another bite. Let's assess the damage. Oh, look at that. Just smashed. Devastating. That leader's slightly roughed up a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Which could have mean it rubbed down his side, maybe. Well, reset and drop again. Have a look at these conditions, would you? This is just absolutely perfect fishing weather for swordfish. I've got one last bait down. Brick's broken off. I'm drifting that up through the water column. Fingers crossed. We can get a hook up out of that. The only downside to that is if we do hook up, if I do hook up, I'm probably gonna be here till dark. Doesn't worry me though, the weather's perfect. It's forecasted to be good tomorrow. I'm even thinking about going out tomorrow yet. So the run back into Conran will be pretty nice anyway. So fingers crossed we can get tight on one of these suckers. Well guys, I'm gonna call it a day. I'd love to stay here and swordfish all night, but uh, being on my own, it's probably a little bit of a risky move, particularly if I you know, have to go to sleep and there has been ships passing in the area, so it's probably not the safest option to be on my own without AIS or something like that to indicate my position. Even then, that's not a guarantee. So I'm gonna wind up this last bait and uh, make the 34 nautical mile steam back to Cape Conran and hopefully get there in daylight. Well guys, what a way to finish the day. Just check that sunset out. Oh, almost makes it worthwhile not catching a sword, but not really. Pretty special part of the world down here in East Gippsland. All right, I'm gonna go check the weather forecast and I think we might be back out tomorrow and try and convert tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs>